All right, what is going on, guys? Welcome back to another Sophisticated Man podcast. And I know what you're thinking: Where the hell have I been? Uh, it's been crazy, man. I've I've been really traveling a lot lately, doing a lot of workshops. Um, but I want to get back to this format of having a podcast and having guests. As you can see, I have a new one today. Mr. Axel, is it right? Axel? Yes, sir. How's it going, Tina? It's going good, brother. How are you? I'm doing great, man. Ready to rock this. So thank you so much for reaching out. And uh, I'm excited to get to know you a little bit better and mm -hmm. talk about a few things. Maybe we disagree. Maybe we agree. Like, let's see how it goes. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm totally, totally into that. And we actually got connected through um, a mutual friend. So Joe, shout out to Strong Minded Joe. He's the one that actually, I believe he did one with you. Yeah. He's done a few on my channel. Uh, he just connected us and said that we would be like a pretty good fit for a podcast. I was like, yeah, let's do it. And uh, and here we are. So, yeah. yeah, man, for the people that maybe are watching that maybe don't know who you are or don't really know what you're about, if you want to give a quick little like elevator pitch or just kind of let people know uh, a little bit about yourself, you know, what would you say? Yeah, I'm a producer and director originally from Cuba. Born and raised in nice. Havana, and I, I came to America in 2012, you know, pursuing mm. the, the dream of, of coming to America and getting a, a better life for me and my family. And I'm mm. currently in LA, and I, I've worked on TV shows and movies, and I've produced a lot of things throughout the years, a lot of music videos with some of the biggest artists that you can think of. And mm. I've also produced one of the biggest podcasts uh, in the space uh, with Impact Theory. So I've been with them for about three years and I've learned a lot working in that uh, environment. So like I live in the intersection of film and new media mm -hmm. with podcasts and YouTube and all of that, but also with a background in filmmaking. So that's kind of my story. And I also started my own, my own show, my own podcast, and I've been interviewing so many interesting people learning from them. And, you know, like you and I were talking about before we started rolling about how many different things you can talk about and how to focus on something. But at the same time, we are complicated humans. Like we're people, mm -hmm. like we, we need to worry about our money. We need to worry about our relationships. We need to make sure that we're healthy and fit. And we also need to have something that drives us like with your career or your job. And like, I feel like so many people like live lives that they're not happy with. So ideally with the with the conversations that i'm having i'm just being normal being real and like talking about the struggles that i've had in all of those different areas and talking to people mm -hmm. that are trying to figure out like how to move forward mm. love that i love the diversity too because we we're we we're talking about that before the pod like there's just so much that you're into and it kind of attracts people that align with that same value system belief system interest whatever and that kind of ties into like a lot of what I talk about is being like a, an individual and knowing yourself and knowing that like, it's okay to be a, a gym rat and also like play video games, or it's great to, you know, go out and, and have fun in the club, but also be disciplined with your work and your habits. So it's like, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things you can do. Um, the one thing that I really like about your podcast, I like the name of it, just high level podcast or like the high level brand. Uh, I'm curious, like to you, what does that mean? Like, what does that mean to be a high level person? Well, I had an experience uh, around 2016 where I got hired by this uh, agency to go and shoot a few commercials for this uh, luxury yacht uh, brand. So mm. I'm a kid from Cuba, immigrant. I come to America. I'm living in middle America in Tennessee, little town, shopping at Goodwill, Walmart. Like that was my <laughs> life, right? And I was like over the moon because I was coming from a third world country. So to me, all of that was amazing. So mm -hmm. I go to shoot uh, this uh, tour through the Caribbean and they put me on this yacht and I was there to film, but they treated me as if I was a guest. So this was like such a high level experience where th that was the first time that I actually saw money up close where mm -hmm. a traditional cruise, like you pay $500, right? And you go on the cruise and it's amazing. Most people like, can't afford even that well this was like a five thousand dollar ticket where for that whole week mm. you were cruising around the caribbean going to all these islands and all of the people there were wealthy everyone was dressed up and i remember having a conversation with the coo of the company and we went to have dinner and he was like hosting us and 
at some point I asked him, well, why don't you guys do like a, a big cruise, you know, with like so many more people? And he said, you know, Axel, we have an opportunity with our lives to either do something normal that everyone can do or do something completely at the highest levels that you can think of. And we just chose to do that. And like mm. that experience really stuck with me. And after that, I, I started changing the way that I thought that I thought about life in a big way. And I always mm. have big dreams, you know, but because of my environment and growing up in a third world country, you, you're just limited. Like the place where mm. you are really changes like how you think about it. like, you know, with my parents, like we were always trying to survive. We didn't know what we were going to have to eat like in three days. Like that was the, the way that I was raised. Uh, because of the country that I lived in and then coming to America. Yeah, that expanded my, my thinking, but there's always higher levels that you're not even mm -hmm. aware of. Mm -hmm. And I remember that when I decided to, to start the podcast, it was this idea of like, it was like a personal mantra of mine of like, you know, mm -hmm. whatever I do, I'm going to do it at the highest levels. So if I'm mm -hmm. going to work on a movie, I'm going to, think about how can I make this film like the best film ever? If I'm going to do a podcast, how can I make the podcast like as big as possible? Because like, it mm. doesn't cost you any more. Like you're, you're going to have to struggle anyway. So right. if you're always thinking about, yeah, let me try this. You know, like I, I, I really don't like people who are passive like that mm -hmm. with anything that you're doing in life and business. If you're someone that you're always using the word try or hope or maybe like that's yeah. something that, with, with my close friends, like we have no maybes. Like if mm -hmm. I ask you, hey, Tino, are you going to be at this event? You either say yes or you say no. Whatever mm -hmm. it is that you're going to do, you have to take it that serious and be a little bit radical. Most mm -hmm. people are not going to like that. Everyone is talking about balance this and balance that. It's like, no, screw that. Like <laughs> if, you, if you're going to do something, I think you have to do it at the highest level. And if you're mm -hmm. going to do it at the highest level, it can be a soft, like half-ass effort. It has to be all in. Mm hmm. I really resonate with that. I really do. I really like that. Like the the commitment and the integrity that you're mentioning. If like if you say you're going to do something, do it like don't don't half ass it like be completely bought into it like 10 toes down. I think that's so important, especially with the content that I make like the, the audience that I have with men like into self improvement and when it comes to like, maybe starting a business or finding the relationship of their dreams like you got to be committed. You can't just be like, ah, maybe I want this or maybe I'll start that business tomorrow. If that's the case, like you're already losing because there's somebody else who's more committed than you, who's more integral than you, and they're already doing it. So it's kind of like For you sure. have to you have to step up your game in that category. Um, mm -hmm. How how do you think? Um, let's, we'll talk men in particular, because that obviously that's that's kind of who I'm speaking to. How do you think men can develop that like high level mindset or just having having the ability to be all in with their goals? Because I know a lot of guys that I talk to, they have the vision or at least they have goals. They're like, yeah, I want a ripped body. I want to make more money. I want more women in my life, which is awesome. But they're not exactly like doing it just yet. They have there's some kind of resistance. So how do you think men can like develop that integrity with themselves? Yeah, to be honest, I think there are two ways that that can happen. Number mm -hmm. one is you hit rock bottom. Like you yeah. get destroyed in any area of your life, either financially or a relationship. You get divorced, then you're going to go to the fucking gym. You mm -hmm. get fired from your job, then you're going to find a way to make money because like you have to make rent. So that's one side of it where you, you hit bottom and then you have to just figure out a way to get out of that. Mm -hmm. The other way that I, that I see it happening and that is a lot nicer is you just surround yourself with three or four guys that really mm. are pushing you to be better and commanding and demanding of you better effort, better results and, and honesty and, and a truth to what you're dealing with and being able to like call you out on your shed and say, yo, like mm -hmm. you, you, you have the, whatever happened to your knee, Okay, you can walk, you cannot run outside, find a way to like lift dumbbells or like do something like you're getting mm -hmm. fat. Like if, if yeah. you have a friend like that in your life, that guy's gonna 
always be pushing you. And I have found mm. those people in my life, like my close circle of friends, like we don't take any, any bullshit. And mm -hmm. we have, we just recently started doing a, a weekly call every Monday. So every Monday morning at 8 a.m., we log in on the call and everyone has to run through like the things that, the goals that they talked about before and mm -hmm. what are you doing? What have you done? And okay, what are we gonna do this week to make that happen? And mm -hmm. it's, it's incredible the changes that you can make in your perspective, your actions, and then what happens in your actual life when yep. you have people like that that are going to push you. And everyone talks about this, the five people, this and that, but then people still stay with losers. Like if, mm -hmm. if your circle of friends, if they're <clears throat> losers, if you are a loser, like you need to fucking change that circle because it's not going to help you. It's not going to change in five years. If you're not around people who are on a path and a tra trajectory of yep. growth and actually getting the things that you actually want, it's not going to happen. Like there's no way. Mm -hmm. I definitely agree with that. I, I've always said that too in my content. Like if you're around people that you should be around people that fit your future, not your past. Because if you're going someplace and you're trying to live a certain life, you want to be around an environment that promotes that growth, not something that's going to say, well, nah, don't go to the gym. You're, you're better off just staying in and eating pizza or not, so, you know, not going outside or something. So, so why do you important. think people, why do you think people stay with those friendships and in that circle? Mm. That's a good question. I think it's just familiarity and being comfortable. Like they've been, cause I've had, I've had a lot of people from high school or people that I grew up with that I, I, to a certain extent, they were good friends. But I remember when I started getting on this like self-improvement journey, they didn't necessarily like understand it or want to go with me. So I had to make the decision, like, do I want to give up my pursuits of being better to just to be friends with them? Or do I want to be, be a better person and, and live a better life, whether they come with me or not. And I chose the latter. Like I obviously wanted to choose myself. So I think people, people generally stick with others that aren't on that same journey, just because I think we're just conditioned to believe that the friends that you grew up with are going to be friends that you have for the rest of your life, which yeah. you, you could, I'm not saying that's impossible, but the likelihood of you staying with these, this group and them still having the same like value system and mindset as you, as you progress, it's very, very unlikely that you're going to stay close. Now you could, but I think people just are, they're just kind of used to it because they think that's just the way, you know, that's just the way things are. Yeah. Yeah. I think there's something to play there with loyalty. Uh, yeah. Loyalty. We are conditioned yep. to be loyal, you know, like it, it's a good trait. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times we're thinking, you know, we have to stay, stay with the people that, that we started mm -hmm. with, the people who have been there. And you definitely yep. have to do that. I think sure. if you can add people to that circle, and then as you start doing the, the, the next things that you have, the next projects and going to the places that you want to go, and then yep. you just invite everyone. And then whoever shows up or whoever says yes to that thing, then you keep carrying on with that person. And eventually... Mm -hmm. everyone else is going to end up falling off because mm -hmm. it is hard, man. It's hard to have friends that you love, Absolutely. but they're just not compatible with your life. And usually it doesn't happen until a few months. I think a few months, maybe a year and a half to two years. That's mm -hmm. when you actually realize that, oh, wow, like I'm such a different person now. Like I don't do this. I don't do that. I don't go yep. to these places. And mm -hmm now your friends are completely different in a way, even though you still mm -hmm. love those people, but now you have found a way to move on and move forward. And that also happens with relationships with, uh, yeah. you know, with romantic relationships. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When the people in your life start saying things like, who are you? Or you don't, you don't seem the same. You look different. You seem something's different about you. That's how you know you're making changes and it's not, it just doesn't align with them anymore, or maybe it doesn't align with you. And uh, that's, that's how you start to realize, okay, maybe they're not going the same places as me, at least for now. Maybe they do eventually, maybe they don't. But at the end of the day, um, I think everybody's concerned with changing others and making sure that they're doing things that you're doing. You really can't do that. Like you can only change yourself. You can't force somebody else to do what you're doing. They got to do that on their own. 
Um, and if they do, great. But you have to be willing to walk away from relationships or people that um, that just don't serve you anymore. And if and I know that sounds cold, that sounds like I'm being super mean and shit. But um, if it's hurting it's your okay. growth, it's, it's okay. Then, it's okay yeah, to be a little away. mean. Yeah, yeah. I think I think so too. Yeah, it's it's fine. You can be a little mean. Uh, and the thing is, if everyone is doing that, then everyone mm-hmm. will just select auto select themselves. Uh, yeah. The other day we had Ty Lopez who was like on the show that I produce, and he was talking about that like natural selection of how like minded mm-hmm. people are always going to pull with each other. And it's like this. He was talking about how nature just like yeah makes this many of this kind of people and this many of this kind of people and then kind of regulates everything so we have a good variety it was really funny mm-hmm. to hear him talk about that um mm-hmm. and yeah it's okay to have people that get mad at you a little bit and mm-hmm. just you got to move forward yeah maybe we can talk about that for a second because i think that's something um especially in in america where where we live i don't know i have some people live outside of the states but um, mainly in America, because that's what I've seen is if people are afraid, I think, to to speak up and say things that actually are like, maybe they're controversial, maybe it's, you know, something that goes against the mainstream, like, um, I think people are afraid to like, speak with authority or speak with like conviction and what they believe, because oh, I don't want to hurt somebody's feelings, or I don't want to offend this person, I don't want them not to like me. Have you noticed that at all, especially living you know, living out where you live, do you notice a lot of that, like, you know, walking on eggshells uh, when it comes to communication? Yeah, definitely. We have a lot of that going on. And I think it's really, to me, it's really crazy to see that. And I completely stand against being afraid of speaking up and saying things. I think Mm -hmm. you're even allowed to offend people. Like, it's okay. It's okay if you offend some people. If someone is too sensitive, like, it's okay. Like, I think the ability to say what you think, even if you're wrong, is more important than not offending someone. And mm. me coming from a third world country where, Tino, you know, we could not say things just because we were not yeah. allowed. Like, right. we had so many limitations. Like, the entire country, like, all of the media, it was, like, controlled by the government. And, like, mm. you couldn't say anything remotely wrong about the government on TV. Everything... <laughs> Had to go through their censorship department all that that's insane now yeah. when we say that yeah that will never happen in america and i i hope that that never happens in america but at the same mm-hmm. time dude i'm i'm afraid that people now are out to censoring themselves not because yeah. of the government but because of the uh, popular opinion so everyone is afraid that five people on twitter are going to get mad at them for saying something about either gay people or transgender people or about the government Mm -hmm. or about making money or about how men and women's uh, relationships dynamics work. Like everyone is afraid to say something. And the problem is the higher up you get in a, for example, you start in your podcast. If you get big and now you're making your, all of your money from that, uh, from that show and you have brand Mm -hmm. deals, let's say like you take it all the way as big as it can be. And you're making a million dollars a year with your show with brand deals, all of it combined, dude, you're going to be afraid to, you're going to be afraid to say sure. something like if you build your brand in something that was not controversial, like the people mm-hmm. who start off controversial, they don't give a fuck. Like they, they can yeah. say whatever, because that's what made their audience. But mm-hmm. for people who, who build their audience on regular topics like business or like self-development, things that are more like neutral. The moment mm-hmm. you start talking about politics, people are going to freak out. If you start yeah. talking about religion, some people are going to freak out. If you mm-hmm. talk about relationships or money or like, then you have a, a bigger problem in your hands because then mm-hmm. if you say that, even though you believe it, you're going to screw yourself over and not just you, your team. So you have people that work under you. So it's very difficult. It's a very like tricky dance to do and, I mean, hopefully people can keep saying what they want. And now that X was bought by Elon, I think things mm-hmm. have changed a lot on that with the whole censorship, censorship, uh, having yep. people like Joe Rogan and like having that kind of freedom to create your own content. Like you and I right now, we're doing this. We don't have to ask permission to anyone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is scary. Like 
what if you get demonetized on on youtube and then all the money that you're making to live like it goes away like this mm -hmm. because someone flagged your video because they don't like it like that is that is tricky man that is yeah that's a problem yeah man it's it is scary and i think what you, you made a good point with with the censorship and the fact that like in other countries the government kind of regulates the censorship but in america it's kind of the opposite where like people are almost regulating, like the, the citizens are regulating the censorship because it's like, well, that's not okay. I don't want to hear that. You're hurting my feelings. If you call somebody fat, they're like, you know, they, they want to file a class action lawsuit on you. But it's like, dude, just get in the gym, eat better. Like, I'm not saying that you're a bad person. Yeah. You're just not making good lifestyle choices. So like, you can't yeah. even say something like that. It's, it's ridiculous. And I think, um, the truth yeah, I think if, is if you're fat, is you're fat. Yeah. 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 And it's not going to help you. Like if I don't tell you that you're fat, you're still going to be fat. So like, it mm -hmm. doesn't help anyone. You yep. you can, and now you can say, Hey, that hurt my feelings. Don't tell me that. Mm -hmm. And then, and then I think when it comes from that point of view, then everyone is a good person. You're going to say, man, I'm sorry that hurt your feelings. But bro, if you want to be fit, you have to know first that you're fat. So yeah, it's complicated. I tell my close friends who are fat, like I tell them and they're like, <laughs> yeah, I know, bro. <laughs> so <laughs> I think that goes a bit with yeah. the personality to, to be able to just say what you want. Uh, mm -hmm. Man, I, I'm probably going to get in trouble for saying stupid things at some point and not even stupid, just for saying what I think. I've yeah. always got into a bit a bit of too much travel because I like to talk too much. So <laughs> let's see, you know, let's see how long it lasts. Yeah. I mean, that's, I would rather, I, I like what you said. Like I'd rather go out knowing that I'm being honest and truthful and authentic than to, to limit myself. Cause I'm afraid that somebody would uh, attack me or, you know, try to try to tear me down. I'd rather be myself than have to have to limit myself anyway. So that's, it's, it's, it's wild, man. I think with men, it's super important that we do that. Cause like, you know, you said you have friends, you tell them, Hey man, like getting a little heavy time to hit the gym or, you know, maybe you should start that business. You told me you're going to do it years ago. You never did. Like, what's up with that? Like holding men to a certain standard, especially in your life, um, to a certain level of excellence. I think that's so freaking needed because now, like, honestly, this is my, this is my viewpoint. I think the bar for men is so low now that like even going to the gym consistently is considered like, bro, you're a legend. You're a beast. It's like, that's just basic stuff. You, you think know? so? I think so personally. Like I think men are like really? the average guy is, is like, he's out of shape. He's not good with communication. He doesn't have a business or he's not wealthy or at least he's not trying to be wealthy. And he's yeah. like, very. his standards are just like super, super low. Yeah, I see what you mean with with the average person being that. But I yeah. think the the perception of the standard, I do think that is super high. So in yeah. general, because of like right now you open Instagram, you mm -hmm. you go on your or your discover page, the moment you watch a couple of videos of guys working out or a couple of videos of cars, like two days later your phone is full with like all of these people who are super fucking fit. Oh yeah. Yeah, so for sure. I think you're right in the term that, yeah, the average guy is down here. Cause I mean, mm -hmm. average has always been average, Sure. but I think our perception of what we should do and become and the type of oh, yeah. job we should have is like through the roof. Cause like, mm -hmm. dude, I'm, when I think about my life, I've done a lot with my life and I still feel like shit. Like whenever I open my <laughs> Instagram, I'm yeah. like, fuck, I don't have that car. I don't yep. make that much money. I cannot travel mm -hmm. to all those places. So I think, our perception of what we should be and like the things that we mm. should accomplish are way, way high. And you see this yeah. a lot with girls too. Mm -hmm. Like I had a friend that was following all of these models. And then when he would have dates with girls that uh, to me, I, I never follow any models. Like if I, if I follow yeah. a model, it's because I know her, I've worked with her, yeah. shoot, or like it's someone that I know. Like, I'm not mm -hmm. going to go follow some random chick that I've never talked to or don't know or don't have any yep. professional connection. That to me right. is like stupid. So I know that there's a lot of guys following all of these hot chicks. And then when, when they talk to a normal girl, they think like this girl that is probably like a eight, they think, nah, she's like a six. And I'm like, bro, you crazy? Look at yeah. that woman is beautiful. What are you talking yeah. about? 
because you're looking at like the top 0.0001% of the beautiful women who also have a brand, who also put content out and engineered mm -hmm. that shit to make sure that they're getting you. And then yeah. that's what you're looking at all the time. So your perspective is your perception of what a beautiful woman is or like a fit guy is, it's going to be all jacked. It's, it's not going to mm. be real. Mm -hmm. No, I, I, a hundred percent agree with that. Social media has like skewed the hell out of the, the way that we view success or ha happiness. What, what, what a good life looks like. Cause you look at, you look at anything online, you look at, you type in entrepreneur you automatically see a guy on a yacht with like hundreds of beautiful women. It's like, yeah. is that all entrepreneur? Like, is that what entrepreneurs do? Like, it's not, that's how bro. Success let me looks? tell you, it's <laughs> not, it's not like I've worked with yeah. a lot of very, very high, high level successful people up close, mm -hmm. bro. They work like maniacs. Oh yeah. They have their little, they have the little moment. I mean, life is amazing. Like when you have mm -hmm. a massive business, like those people live an amazing life, but dude, yep. they work so hard and mm -hmm. there's, that whole idea that yeah you can make like 30 grand a month from bali like working from your laptop sipping a coffee two hours a week <laughs> that's bullshit man that's <laughs> because like even yep. if you could do that yeah there's another guy who says yes yeah, so you did that in two hours i'm going to work 18 hours and then i'm going to be so much ahead yeah. of you and then i'm going to come and get your customers and your clients and put you out of business so mm -hmm. like that idea it's is crazy so mm -hmm. I, let me ask you something like with the, what have you seen is the biggest problem guys are dealing with, with all the content that you make and the messages that you get, like, like mm -hmm. the honest, like the, the truthful, like when a guy sends you a message of like things yeah. that they're actually dealing with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'd say the common theme that I've noticed is discipline and like consistency with what they're trying to do. Like they lack a lot of discipline. Like maybe they, they try something for a little bit or they, maybe they try going to the gym for a while or they start a business or they, they start dating or something and they, they do a little bit, but then something comes up or resistance comes up and they just stop or they give up or they, they don't go as hard. They don't change. So a lot of people that hit me up are like, man, um, I'm lacking consistency, discipline, like they don't have structure, which is a lot of what I coach guys to do. Like I help them create some kind of structure, like, all right. If you can't go to the gym, you can't build the business, like what do we need to do in your life to mm -hmm. schedule that time in so you allow you know, you allow yourself enough time to to get the the work in to to actually meet your goals. So I say a lot of it is like consistency. Yeah. I I would say that it's they're not lacking consistency, they just don't have an identity. That, yeah, that exactly. is what I think is the problem. Yeah. Because yep. when you have your identity and you know who you are, then you mm -hmm. do the things that you have to do because who you are at that least that so was the the biggest change in my life to be able to step out of my comfort zone and actually do those things like i used mm -hmm. to be skinny like i was so skinny and like the gym was not my place at all i was always a very intellectual person i was good with words good communicating mm -hmm. i love to read i love to take in information really good memory and yep. that was my like my superpower was my mind but then mm -hmm. my body was like, I never saw myself as strong or anything like that. And yeah. it took a while. But once I started seeing myself as I'm strong, I'm a beast, like I'm going to yep. get super fucking jacked. I'm gonna, mm -hmm. like, I'm going to be that guy. Then I began to do those things because that's who I was. Mm -hmm. So I think it starts with that, especially when you're young, like in your early 20s, you don't have, you have no idea who the fuck you are. Like, mm -hmm. of course not. Like. You have mm -hmm. been uh, a kid for a long time. Now you are you have been someone's son or daughter or you you have your friends and you're like a student. Like you don't know who you are. Like everyone is telling mm -hmm. you, okay, now you're a student. Now you go to college. Now you do this. Until you come out of that, there's a beautiful transition that happens like in your 20s going into your yep. 30s. And like I, how old are you? So I'm 28 now. 28 so mm -hmm. you're gonna have a major transition from 28 to 32 that's the next oh, step i believe it <laughs> yeah so I, I tell, i'm telling you like call mm -hmm. me on your 30 seconds birthday and <laughs> we're gonna talk about how fucking different you're gonna be man yeah it's like when i was 20 even when i was 28 so now i just turned 34 like okay. from 20 28 to my mid 30s massive mm. changes man massive mm. changes and developing that identity, I think you're at the right 
moment to mm-hmm. like you almost have to demand of yourself right now that yeah. you sit down and really focus on who you could be not not even who you want to be who you could be if mm. if everything was like dialed up to 11 who would tino become what does that look like mm. write all that shit down and then tell reread that like every week every week every week and bro, mm-hmm. you're going to make such massive changes from 28 to the next like two years. Even you're not mm-hmm. even going to recognize yourself. You're going to be laughing at the men that you are right now. Yeah. That, that's so crazy that we're talking about this right now. Cause that's, that's literally the work that I've been doing in the last month. Cause I'm a part of this, like, um, this like leadership program that I've been, I've been doing for the last month, which I've actually been traveling to LA like almost every week, um, to do it. Awesome. And, uh, that's exactly what we're doing is like, figuring out like who we want to be and like actually visualizing our vision, like, putting it on paper, looking at it constantly. So I've been doing a lot of that lately. And um, I think you great, you made an, a great point about identity because that literally is where it starts. Like if I'm, let's say I'm a smoker and I'm trying to get, you know, trying to stop cigarettes. Well, it's a lot easier to quit cigarettes if I don't identify with being a smoker anymore. If I'm saying, oh, I'm trying to quit smoking, and I use patches, I use gum, you know, whatever, whatever, like, um, whatever thing you're using to to get off of smoking, you're still kind of identifying with a smoker because you're saying, I'm trying to quit. But mm-hmm. if you made this shift and said, okay, I'm not a smoker, I'm I'm a healthy person, I eat clean, I go to the gym, I drink water, like you're you're identifying with another type of person. So your actions are going to follow suit. Now, it doesn't mean you're going to quit smoking overnight, but you're you're setting yourself up for much more success because you're already identifying with a new type of being. And that's just so 100%. powerful. Yeah. Just pick a new vice that is good for you. Yeah. And, and yeah. You know, where you just start doing that. So like mm-hmm. change the, the smoker for like, I'm a gym rat. Like I'm a gym exactly. rat. I'm a gym rat and just go hard on that. Mm-hmm. Man, it's like life is too short to be wasting it with like stupid things. I agreed. Right? And everyone is asking for like empathy and understanding and all that. And mm-hmm. I think we have had enough of, of that. Like it doesn't yeah. matter how much I understand that you're trying to quit smoking. Just fucking mm-hmm. quit smoking. Like it's not going to help you. <laughs> so yeah. I can be nice and be like, yo, maybe you, no, no, no. no. Like that's not mm-hmm. going to help you. Yo, mm-hmm. you have to stop. If you keep doing that, you're destroying your life. So yep. I would only tell you once, and then if you don't do it, then okay, mm-hmm. you're done. Yeah, I think I think people need to really, especially like men. I think men really need to look at like outcomes that their actions are producing, and really question: Is this going to get me what I want in five years or ten years? Like, if I'm even if I'm going to the gym and I'm not noticing like results yet, I don't have a six pack. I'm not like losing weight at least you're doing the work and you know that over time you're eventually going to notice a lot of results, especially if you're eating clean and you're tracking yeah. and doing all that stuff. I think it's just so important to like, um, to just put in the work, even when you don't notice that you're making massive changes. Cause you, you'll notice that in business too. Like I, I started my yeah. business like five years ago and I just started closing like high ticket clients like last year. So it took me like three, four years to even figure wow. that out, but it it's part of the journey. And that's, that's why most people quit when they start a business. They say what, what in the first year, like 80%, 90% of businesses fail. Mm-hmm. And I think it's because like people, people don't see results and they're just like, ah, this isn't for me. But I yeah. think, I think that's the, that's like the perfect opportunity for you to like push through that shit. Cause it, to me, failure is just like giving up on your action it's not like you you messed up failure is just mm-hmm. actually you deciding i'm not going to do this anymore yeah and you're going to keep messing up like as long as you keep doing it you're going to keep making mistakes and keep yeah. messing it up i mm-hmm. think it goes back to like knowing who you are and exactly. whatever business you're going to pick like making sure that the thing that you're choosing is part of who you are as a person mm-hmm. so if if you're going to go work for someone else if it's not aligning with who you want to be, man, you need to have a, an exit plan and you have to do yeah. whatever you have to do to make money, like a hundred percent. Like mm-hmm. I, I don't want people to be unemployed with a big dream. 
Sure. I want you to have a big dream and be making money, even if you're flipping burgers or doing whatever it is that you have to do in that moment. Mm-hmm. But you have to know where you want to, like who you want to become and where you want to yep. go. And mm-hmm. once you have that, I think it becomes, for example, for me, like I'm always going to work in movies and TV and like making media and content and documentaries and music videos. That will never change. Like that's who yeah. I am. Like mm-hmm. I could go and do another type of job and it's just like, I'm going to find a way to come back to creating beautiful images, to telling stories, to doing that. Cause that's who I am. And I, I think the problem is that is not everyone gets to know what that is up front. And it's really sad. Like you can have people with a lot of potential if they just don't know for sure, for sure what it is that they want to do. Mm-hmm. They just wander. It's like, yep. you don't go all in. Like you could like a girl a lot, but you're not going to marry her if you don't feel like, yo, th- this person is the one, you know? Yeah. And I think yeah. the same happens with businesses. I think mm-hmm. with businesses, uh, because you can start and stop and like, it's okay to have multiple and all that. Mm-hmm. It becomes even easier to like just quit on something and have the new opportunity. And uh, there's a lot of things that happen in psychology. I, I don't remember who I was listening uh, to, but they were talking about uh, the the work that takes to go from zero to 100 is, is one level of skill and mindset. And then once you get there, all you need to do is like keep going and then you're going to skyrocket but by mm-hmm. a lot. But mm-hmm. you won't see it. Like what you were talking about, you won't see that that is happening. You won't see it. You won't see it. Like it would feel as if you're just like hitting a wall. And it's just like that next step to actually make a, a big impact on that business. Mm-hmm. It, it just won't happen in that super quick trajectory that they chose in movies and all that, you know, like mm-hmm. it's going to be a grind of surviving. And the longer you survive, the more trained you're going to be to see the patterns and to see the things and make the decisions that actually mm-hmm. show you a path to like making a lot more money or like breaking yep. through with your product or the marketing or whatever it is that you're doing. Like it happened to me with like with my podcast. Mm. I, I did my first episode like in 2017. Mm. That's like three, like six years ago. Yeah. Dude, like it's been a long drag. Mm-hmm. And I would start do three, four episodes. Then I had to stop. I would start again. But I knew that I, I w- this was a forever thing. I knew that I was going to keep doing this forever. Like, yep. it doesn't matter if, like, I knew that, hey, the views and the numbers are not my goal. My goal was always get to 100 episodes. Yep. Because by the time I got to 100 episodes, I knew I was going to become so much better at having the interviews and doing the conversations. Mm-hmm. that then I was going to be like a complete different person. So my goal wasn't even, oh, this many followers. And like, I wanted to have a set amount of followers by this date, of course, like we all have that, but that's not where the only thing I can do to accomplish that is to do more, more reps, do more mm-hmm. interviews and get better, which is with each interview. And then by yep. the time I, I get to a hundred, I'm going to be an expert. So it took me a while to have one episode that could actually blow up. Mm-hmm. But when that episode happened, dude, I was so ready. Like it really happened that way because I was ready and Mm -hmm. I was ready because I had done all the other episodes before. Mm -hmm. So even with that guest, uh, my interview that, that went kind of viral was with Justin Waller. Mm -hmm. Have I done that interview with Justin in in my early stages? I, I wouldn't have been able to be who I was in that interview and to actually be able to follow the conversation the way that I did. And it was Mm -hmm. all because of that, that path of like learning and doing the reps. So if you're starting out with any type of business right now and and listening to the show, commit to yourself that you're going to do it for an insane, like marker of whatever that is. Like if it's with content, put a high number as the goal of how much content you're going to make. If it's with sales, put a high number on like how many calls you're going to make and how many people you're going to outreach. Like just make that number, whatever you think that is big, then double that number and Mm -hmm. just understand and accept until I hit that number, I cannot quit and I cannot complain because I just haven't put in the the reps. Mm -hmm. I love the point you made about not being ready 
to to take on that kind of you know identity or, or reality before you actually put in the reps because that is a real thing that I don't think people like I don't think people realize is like you yeah you could have a ton of followers you can go viral you can make a bunch of money all at once like, really quickly but do you have the skill sets do you have the behaviors the disciplines the mindset to keep it going because it most of the time you don't like that's that's why like lottery winners when they win uh you know the jackpot or something i don't know the statistic but they say like a large large portion of people that win the lottery end up losing it within a year because they don't have the the behaviors of someone that actually knows how to handle money or knows how to invest money into something else or keep it or keep it growing, they lose it because they they still have that that poor person's mindset. And I had the same thing happen to me. Like when I had my first channel, so this is my second YouTube channel now. When I had my first one, I actually hit a, a viral video, and I it was like you know it hit over like a million views. I had all these subscribers coming in, and it was something that I I wasn't even like trying to go viral. It just kind of happened. Cause I made this video about like these movie scenes and I was kind of like commenting on how that looked alpha and beta, even though I don't really use those fucking words anymore. Um, but I was like using these, these examples and I got a ton of subscribers from that. And I remember thinking to myself, like, wow, I have like, my channel got monetized. I got like all these things. And I'm like, what the heck? I felt like I wasn't ready. I had the like, imposter syndrome coming up because yeah. it was like my second year not even my second year It's probably like my a year and a half into YouTube. I was like, this can't be right. Like there's no way I'm already this far ahead. And I actually had to make the decision. I was like, okay, I want to make different styles of content and I want to do it a, a totally different way. Cause everybody that came to my channel was looking for this type of video. So then I decided, all right, well, let me start a new channel with the skill sets that I have, the repetitions that I have. Cause at that point, I made hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos. So I was like, I have the skills. Let me just make a new channel and I'll grow that one. And and this one will actually feel like I earned it as opposed to the first time. Because the first one I was like, I'm not going to say I got lucky, but I kind of had like a, a, a nice little break there because I had no like no way to, to sustain that. Yeah. Well, man, that shows a lot of growth on your part. And I think for a lot of people, that is a very difficult thing to do with anything in your life. When you have something that is good, mm -hmm. letting that go for something that can be actually great. Yeah. Dude, that, that is hard to, that is hard to do, but it's hard to learn how to do. Mm -hmm. And I think once you are able to do that a couple of times, your life can actually begin to be amazing. Because like mm -hmm. now you're on a different path altogether. Now the possibilities can be so radically different that like you're mm -hmm. not even in the same country or the same planet. Yeah, uh, but that that's hard. So mm -hmm. I'm I'm happy that you made that decision and that you were able to bet on yourself. Because sometimes mm -hmm. we're we're just afraid. I mean, everyone goes through this, bro. Like everyone, sure. it doesn't matter. It's just different levels of making that decision and deciding you know, I need to make a change. Like this is, mm -hmm. this doesn't line up. And dude, once you, that's why I was telling you, like if you can sit down and write those things, mm -hmm. like that's something that I do over and over. I have this one note in my phone that is my life plan that I go to. Like every time I feel frazzled, I just go back to that. Okay. When you were like in your best state, you wrote down what you wanted to do. So just go mm -hmm. back to that and just focus on yeah. those three, four things. Just going back to that would keep you grounded and then it would allow you to make the decision to let go of the thing that doesn't align with your life. And mm -hmm. it would allow you to make the decision to go all in with the things that even now they seem difficult and they seem like you're not going to be able to pull this up. But just trust in yourself that in, in two years time, in five years time, you're going to get there. It's like having that map of your own dreams. And that sounds like, cheesy as fuck but dude it really works it's like you need to have some yeah. kind of idea of what you want to do and who you want to be and more mm -hmm. importantly you need to be able to dream of who you could be even if you don't yeah. see yourself there yet and i think that's why it's so important to like have a group of people like around you and even like dude the thing the the show that you're doing this is going to help so many people 
And for mm-hmm. me, like the, the show that I do, it has helped so many people. Like whenever I get that message of a guy that is dealing with a breakup or someone that is trying to learn how to be better with their communication and they see one of my videos, mm-hmm. it's like that is actually helping people. And they, yeah. they are going to go on to doing something in business or in their relationships and improving their lives. And therefore, it's like this big ripple effect and everyone is going to get better and better and better. So like, I, I hate seeing people being negative on social media and that social media is this and that. Like, it's mm-hmm. actually like amazing for everyone. If you're mm-hmm. using it to watch, like I have one show where I was saying, like, if you're watching too many cat videos, then you're doing it wrong. <laughs> but don't blame the, the platform. Don't blame yeah. like society or whatever the fuck. It's like mm-hmm. you choose what you want to watch. And exactly. you can either choose to watch things that motivate you, inspire you, and and give you education to go and change your life mm-hmm. and go and do good things in your life. Or you can be watching a, a bunch of like stupid people fight over things that don't even matter to your life or like celebrity culture of who's dating who is like, who gives a fuck? Like focus on your own life. Mm-hmm. Man, I, I couldn't agree with that more. Um, I have the same, I have the same belief around social media. Like I, you hear a lot of people saying stuff like, Oh, it's so negative. It's ruining society. It's ruining the world, et cetera. But then you look at all the things that it produced. I mean, we wouldn't be talking without social media yeah. or like people that um, I have clients around the world. Like I wouldn't be talking to them. I wouldn't be in communication with half the people that I know with uh, without social media. So it's kind of like you got to take the good with the bad and understand mm-hmm. that like you just get what you you get what you put into it. You know, if you, if you yeah. just watch things that are negative and you just pump yourself full of wasteful things and that's how you're going to interpret it. But if you use it for a good reason, then you, you get some advantage. Like I've said, social media is simply a tool. That's all it is. Yeah. That's all your phone is. That's all any of that is. It's a yeah. tool. But if you, if you allow it to consume you, well, you become the tool, not that. Like you want to make sure that you're using the tool. It's not using you. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about that because I really love social media and uh, mm-hmm. I do a lot of work in that space. So sure. I would love to talk about the things that guys can do to handle their social media so they can yeah. become sophisticated and high level and all that kind of stuff. So mm-hmm. what are a couple of things that you think people could do like tactical advice on that? Yeah. Yeah. Tactical advice on social media. Um, base, one of the things that you said earlier, number one, just unfollow these like models. There's no reason unless you know this person to, to follow like a bunch of like sexual accounts and things like that. That's just going to be a distraction. So I'd say number one, get rid of like, get rid of all the followers that don't, that don't make sense to you. They either you, you can't learn from or you don't align with. Just unfollow those people. Just don't don't allow yourself to be distracted. So that's number one. Just purge your following. Um, number two, start following accounts that will teach you the things that align with what your vision tells you. So if you're, if you're saying like, I want to start a business or I want to get jacked or I want to make more money, whatever, find accounts that can teach you those things and start following, not only following them, but taking their advice, applying it, actually testing it out for yourself and and start using social media as almost like a uh, a learning platform because that's what YouTube is like it's a search engine. Mm-hmm. You can search how to make money, how to start a funnel, how to how to learn sales, marketing. You could do all of that through social media. Um that's how I started my channel. I literally googled like how to start a brand, how to do this. Like I learned all that stuff through through YouTube and through social media. Um, so that's another thing. And then finally, I would say as, as you like create content too. like, don't just be a consumer, be a creator. So, and that doesn't mean you have to like make elaborate content, like, like you or I make, it it could be something simple, like me documenting myself into the gym or me documenting this new skill that I'm learning that I'm working on. So that way you're actually showing people that you're on a path to, to success or you're, you're documenting your journey. I think Gary Vee talks about this a lot. He says, you know, document, don't create. I love that because you're, you're basically just, you're showcasing your life. Cause that's what social media 
I think it was originally was intended for that. Like you're being social on this media. So you're showing your life and who knows, somebody could find your account and you posting a bunch of gym videos or you posting advice on things that you're learning. Somebody might ask you eventually, Hey, how do you do that? And, and boom, you have a business idea or you have an, you have an idea to start like a cookbook or a, some kind of course you could potentially make even monetization aside. Let's say that doesn't happen. You could start a relationship. A girl could look at your page and say, wow, like you're really into, you know, the gym. You're really into self-improvement. Me too. And boom, you could find your girlfriend that way by just being authentic and putting yourself out there. So those are some ways that you can like drastically use um, social media to your advantage. At least, at least I think so. Yeah, no, I agree 100 percent. If you're not using it to create a, a personal brand of some mm -hmm. kind, you're yep. just fucking wasting so many opportunities like I it's agree. incredible the amount of opportunities that will come to you in all areas with business and relationships when you're actively creating a, a personal brand and mm -hmm. i think a lot of people just it's difficult at first because you're a bit afraid of what other people are going to think about me showing like that i'm going to the gym or that i'm doing this or that or me talking about my business, do I think that I'm better than anyone else? For example, if you're, let's mm -hmm. say you're a real estate agent, if you start doing all those videos about the real estate agent, then my friends are going to think that I'm only like interested in this business and uh, that I'm so pushy. You have to get mm -hmm. that out of your mind. So yep. when you actually look at the data, when you look at the reach on the reels, the reels are going to random people that are not your followers or your friends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like, 80 to 90% of the views on a reel are from random people on the reels feed. It's not going yep. to your friends. So mm -hmm. even like something that I see a lot of the time is people don't want to post an old picture or an old video because you have this basic like lie in your mind that, oh, I don't want to like re like redo the same thing because people are going to see it. It doesn't work like that. The mechanics mm -hmm. of how the app works is you can reutilize the content, repost it again because it's going to a complete different audience. So don't yeah. don't even worry about that. And mm -hmm. start building that brand with a mix of what you were talking about of being social, showing a mm -hmm. bit of your life, that showing that you're a regular person, that you're not yeah. just like some like stuck up figure that only does one thing. Like you have mm -hmm. you have variety to your life, you know, like you you like to dance or you like to do the cooking and whatever it is. Like you, mm -hmm. you're a person, like you're a human because we want to connect to a human. But then go ham and I would say post way more than you think that is normal. Like you can post two, three times a day and you'll be fine. Like there's nothing yeah. wrong. People are not going to get tired of you because the app needs the content to feed it to new audiences. And that's how people mm -hmm. are going to discover. So keep doing that. And then the last thing that I would say, Tino, that I, this is something that I do in my life and I think people need to do a lot more. Stop watching stories. Don't watch no mm -hmm. one's stories. Yeah. Like, like I have really close friends of mine that I don't even watch their stories. Like <laughs> I only need to watch my brother. And then if I'm interested in a specific woman, like that's the only two people that I need to watch. I don't mm -hmm. need to watch anyone else. Unless mm -hmm. someone is tagging me and I'm resharing or something like that. Stop watching stories because it doesn't matter how much willpower you have, you will lose because yeah. the app is engineered in a way that you need that dopamine hit one after the other. So the most successful people that I know that I've been able to work close to, they don't mess with the app. Like the yeah. app is there, you post, mm -hmm. that's it, no interaction because it yep. messes up with your brain chemistry. And there is nothing, it, everyone thinks that, oh, I'm like, I'm so distracted. It's like, yes, you're human. So you are mm -hmm. supposed to see something and get a response in your brain. So yep. you are human. Everyone is going to have the same response. So your job is to not look at it because there's nothing you can do about it. So just mm -hmm. stop watching stories. Your life is going to be so much better. Mm. That's a good point. I, I, I like what you said about the stories because that's something that I, I definitely can fall into sometimes. Like I'm checking up on people or checking on like even, even people that I, some of my coaches or some of the things, some of the people that I mentored by, I tend to look at their stuff and kind of see what they're doing, which sometimes I think is somewhat valuable just depending on what they're doing in their life. But I could totally see the value that you're talking about of like not being 
completely, completely consumed by it. Because that's that's something I talk about too is is being a producer in life, not being a consumer. And I think that's mm-hmm. so, especially for men, that is so critical because the more that you like, the more that you consume and just take information in constantly, or you're just like, you're stimulated by things and you're not doing anything with it, man, it, especially if you're a guy that like really is like masculine and you want to like do things with your life, you have purpose, you're going to feel miserable. Like when you're not doing anything and you're just kind of like sitting around taking things in and not, not doing, you're going to feel like a hollow shell of a man. You're not, you're not going to feel like you're doing much to contribute. And, uh, that's, that's a a habit that I hope a lot of men break out of, because if you can start do it, it could be something small. I don't care if it's like you start doing freaking hundred pushups a day or something, something very, very tiny. Um, as long as you're getting something produced, like in, in some capacity, you gotta, you gotta start doing that. For sure. And the, the pushups is a really good one. Like, yeah. You know how many people can do 20 push-ups? Oh, yeah. It's insane. Yeah. That's something maybe we need to start some sort of challenge that at least 100 yeah. push-ups a day. You need to start yeah. that for the new year, Tina. That's a good mm-hmm. idea. I might honestly do that. Like have a little like free challenge or like a, a weekly cha- a free like push-up challenge where every day okay. we'll just like go on you and I'll do like 100 a day. Yeah. Okay. Yep. I'll join you on that. That'd be dope. Yeah, I'm totally down for that. Hell yeah. Well, brother, I, I know um, you mentioned you you had a hard out um, sometime soon, so I want to be respectful of your time. Um, okay. And I think we talked about a ton of like high level, uh, pretty awesome like uh, concepts and things. So is there any um, closing things you wanted to add or anything that you wanted to share? It could be something like, where people can find you or just uh, maybe a closing message that you had? Yeah. The, the one thing that I want people to take away with is, man, you are in charge of your story. Mm. Like, even though there's so many circumstances <clears throat> and things around your life, you're still in charge of your story. So make sure it's a good one. Like mm. pick a good story for your life and then go and execute on that. Love that. I love that. And I agree. I think, I mean, I can't really, I can't really think of anything else to close out with besides like, yeah, like you're in control. And at the end of the day, like you, you decide what you do with yourself. And as long as you know where you're going and you know why you're going there, the what will take care of itself. So just make sure that you know why and where and how, well, not, I can't say how, why, where, and a little bit of like, um, a little bit of the what, but the how takes care of itself. Like you don't have to worry about how you're going to do it as long as you know the vision. So that, that, that's my two cents. Um, yeah. Where, where can people find you? I know you have the podcast on YouTube, you have an Instagram, uh, where's, yeah, where's um, the contact? Yeah. I'm Axel Axe on all the platforms. Come over and let's chat. I love to have a good argument with people. And I also love to give very tactical advice with things. So mm-hmm. Anything related to media, branding, production, media, uh, marketing, all of that, I'm, mm. I'm your guy. And I, I know a little bit about fighting, a little bit about dancing, a little bit about mm-hmm. everything, you know? So. Hell yeah. Dope. Yeah, I'll leave, I'll leave his stuff down below if you guys want to check out his pages. You know where to find my stuff. You know where to find uh, my coaching is down below if you want to have a, a further conversation with me. And if you like the content, Give me a thumbs up, subscribe, check back for the next time because podcasts are going to be rolling a lot more in 2024. So I'm going to have a lot more guests and uh, a lot more conversations like this. And hopefully I have uh, Axe back on the on the channel, man. This was a dope conversation. For sure, Tina. Let's do it, man. Anytime. Hell yeah. All right, guys. We're going to get going and uh, catch you all in the next one. Peace. Okay.